Of course, it's the Belgian presidency, rotating presidency uh, of the EU, and you're going to be leading uh, the finance and economic uh, portfolios. My first question, however, has to do with the European Central Bank. I know you're not going to tell me what you think they will do on the Thursday, so rest assured. But it is factual that we are going to see this year going from hiking to cutting interest rates. How do you feature that in your models? Well, of course, we see what uh, the inflation rates are doing, uh, both at the European level, but also at the, at the Belgium level. Uh, we, we see that they, they are declining, but it's of course uh, the, the, the ECB that has to decide. They, they work in full uh, independency and I uh, leave that decision to them. But, but you don't think macro, just on the macro front and, and beyond going in terms of the, the Thursday decision, but the overall scenario is obviously going to change. Policy goes from restrictive to less uh, restrictive. Is that something that you contemplate or you say as a government we have to do our fiscal homework and that's what well, we're we, focused we on. Have, we have to do our homework of course and, and then of course we will see what the impact mm -hmm. will be of, of that uh, of that decision that they can take uh, in the in the near future uh, but uh, overall of course we see that the inflation numbers are going down and if you look to the predictions for 2025 we see that, that they are close to or beneath the the, the two percent uh, objective that uh, that ECB has so that's evolving in, in the good direction. Uh, some say however the the almost margin for a soft landing the idea that you tame inflation and you're not strangling the economy too much. It's, it's still difficult to navigate. Do you feel optimistic about 2024 in terms of the growth prospects for your country, but also the euro area, because well, that matters? We, we actually see for this year that the numbers are already very good for mm -hmm. our country. For the 2025, 2026 uh, numbers and growth numbers, we see indeed that they are very close to the pre-pandemic uh, growth rate numbers. So that's actually uh, positive, positive news. And we are, of course, hoping that these numbers also will uh, will become true. And that's for GDP, but obviously you have the fiscal side that may not look as good, and that is the debt and deficit. You know there has been questions over the past year, especially, that the trajectory that Belgium is on is, is rather questionable. Uh, well, how do you respond to that? Well, we, we always say how, how important it is that in the medium term, mm -hmm. of course, we can come to a, a, a sustainable debt level, um, and, and, and especially with our deficit, of course, that we need to do. And, and, and what is necessary for that is that we're doing reforms, reforms in our, in our health care system, reforms in our uh, pension system and that's actually uh, the, the also one of the elements that is, is, is part of the reform that is at, at, uh, taking place uh, at, uh, currently with the economic governance review that we own focus on that sustainable debt level in the medium term but that we also incentivize governments member states also Belgium to do reforms and extra investments and, and, and when it comes to the deficit specifically when you speak to investors what do you tell them because it is true that there has been warnings that you need to change your, well, not just projections, but some policies to rein in those deficit. But at the same time, you had a very successful bond auction. So the market seems to lag where you're selling. So what do you tell investors about this? Well, that's actually the, the, the combination of these two, mm -hmm. uh, the, two stories. We, of course, have the, well, the, what, the, what we did with the, the biggest financial transaction mm -hmm. in, in, in Belgium history, Belgium's history uh, with, the, with the state bond uh, that was uh, issued. And on the other side, of course, we know that we, we will have to work on our deficit. We are now above the, the 3% uh, mm -hmm. deficit or below the 3% deficit um, objective that, that, that is necessary. We are on a trajectory. We also... You'd be uh, not uh, compliant. We are not compliant stands. currently, but of course we, we know that we, that we have to work on that. And again, that's also the reason why it's so important that we have that uh, economic governance review and, and that we also agree on, on, that, uh, on that new reform at the European level, but also for the, the high debt countries such as Belgium, that they have a clear budgetary mm -hmm. framework in which they have to work and can work to obtain that uh, medium-term sustainable debt level. Right, and especially this year, there's this idea that fiscal is going to become more important. Investors are going to pick more where they go because of that. So, exactly. and, and in terms of uh, the files that you're going to handle now, perhaps switching from uh, Belgian finance minister to the presidency of the, of the rotating uh, presidency of the EU, uh, you have a, a dossier that's going to be difficult, and that is what to do with the Russian frozen assets, but mm -hmm. also the proceeds from uh, the Russian frozen yeah. assets. There's two questions that are running parallel here. One is obviously what to do with the revenue that comes from those frozen assets. Do you think at some point the EU will say, 
yes, we'll find a way to tax it, we'll find a way to make money out of this, well, but we're not paying. There is already a proposal on the table and yeah. we're working on that and I think that uh, with the windfall tax that, that we should need to uh, move forward. I think, of course, that we have to do it in an orderly manner and that it has to be organized uh, organized well, but I'm, I'm convinced that we can move forward with this file. That's also already that something that we do also on these revenues at the Belgium level, of course, yeah. just with the company tax that is uh, on these uh, on these pr proceeds. Uh, another question is, of course, the question of confiscation of these, these frozen goods. There, I, I think that we should, of course, be very prudent, uh, that we, of course, also need to look at the, at the, at the global level, G7 level, what can, what, what, what can be done. But for us, it's important that it's uh, legally sound, what uh, the pro proposal that comes on the table, and also that we take into account the risk for any uh, impact on the financial stability, because, yeah, for example, big uh, organization like, like Europe, Clear, of course, are, um, are, are important financial which institutions we, we, which we host here in, uh, in in Belgium and which also host, of course, the, the revenues. So, so th that's indeed uh, an, an important uh, element that needs to be taken into account and that where we have to be very prudent um, what kind of direction we are going there. And, and, and just because this issue is so complex, just, just to break it down perhaps in, in a way that it's clear, uh, what you see is that the revenue that stems from the frozen assets, you believe, yes, so will be a way to mobilize that, that the money through a windfall tax. Well, we, we, we're definitely open to that and there's already and a proposal on the table. There, there, there's already a proposal that uh, went on, uh, came on the table uh, last, uh, last December. We're working on that and, and I'm sure that we need to move forward there. We, we understand that that is a direction we can uh, we can move forward. Uh, but on the other hand, and I'm, I'm pretty sure that we but can also that land with a good or, proposal. Or, because yesterday, uh, the top diplomat, Burrell, appeared to say the foundation for that to move quickly is is already there. Do you think well, on that think we're going to see? I think the Belgian presidency and can can come and, and move, come forward with the, with the, with a good proposal. The other question is, of course, with respect to the confiscation, which I also hear, and mainly at the, at the mm -hmm. G seven level, and mainly uh, the, the 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 United States that is that is proposing this. I'm a little bit more reluctant, okay. uh, just because of the fact that I think, well, of course, we, we need a global level playing field. We also need to be sure that it's legally sound and it cannot impact our financial stability of systemic uh, institutions such as, as Euroclear that we also have here in, in our country. And that is what the ECB says, although the Commission is much more open to this, saying legally you could just say if you don't invade a country, nothing's going to happen to your assets. Yeah, but you, you always have to look at, at, at the, 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 the full picture, mm -hmm. the total picture, and, and here I think that we really need to look at these uh, conditions, right. uh, legally sound, uh, the, the, the financial stability and also a global level playing field, which is important. I think that on the windfall tax uh, proposal that is now on the table, we can move forward mm -hmm. and that can also generate, of course, revenues that we can use for, for Ukraine. And, and the other question, now that you speak of revenues for Ukraine, next week there's a very important uh, well, next European week. summit on the but, Thursday. The idea is that, well, there's a number of ideas uh, on the table. My first question is, do you think finally this aid for Ukraine, the 50 billion euros for the next four years, is that going to get signed off on the Thursday? Is that your working assumption? Well, Come Friday, that's approved. Well, at least that, that is, of course, the goal of the Belgian presidency, that we can also move forward at that point with, with uh, 27 and that that Ukraine fund can actually also uh, come in place uh, and that we that we move forward. And, but, but do you think is that you're working because you must know whether you're clear or, or you're moving closer or not do you believe this is going to happen next week I, I really believe that it's that it's possible but of course it's all uh, at the end that we need to make a decision uh, and and but the best case uh, proposal and best case solution that is currently on the table the best case scenario is of course that we can come to an agreement with 27 including Hungary and, and what if Victor Orban says what he said to be honest for months now that he does not believe it's appropriate to do this through the budget if you want to do this outside whoever wants to do it can do it. Hungary does not want to get involved. What if he gets stuck in that line and you do not have that unanimity? Then what's the plan B well, specifically? Well, there is no plan B currently. I mean, we need to work you on that. You don't have any well, ideas but, of maybe but, another fund, but a, but a special can, purpose vehicle? I can uh, imagine that there are many alternative solutions and that we have to work on that. But I think that the, 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 the only way forward currently is that we work on a proposal with 27 and, and I'm, well, I'm convinced that and I'm, I really believe that we can move forward uh, with, with this proposal. And, and Minister, fundamentally, some say the issue is that there is no money 
if you want to help Ukraine, you need substantial uh, funding for the country, but also you have all of these other issues that the EU says you want to invest in, the digital, the green defense. The bottom line, some say, is that you're trying to do too much and you don't have the money for it, which brings to question, then how do you raise the funding? Well, do you go to markets course, and do a recovery fund 2.0? That's uh, that's an, an op or, you know, a possibility, of course. Do you want the it? Next, well, I think that it that it's a, a, a way. What what is important with the next generation? You well, we, mm -hmm. we first have a lot of um, of investments that need to be done. A lot that's of challenges. The say. Yeah, we have a lot of challenges. The, the green transition, mm -hmm. the, the the digital transition, uh, the competitiveness question, and so on. So yeah, we need of course uh, money to uh, to invest. And there we now have the next generation EU 1.0, which 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 proved to be working, but of course we also need to analyze and evaluate it. That's something that also will be done during our presidency. And based on that evaluation, we can see if a next generation EU 2.0 will be a, a possibility. The only thing I, I, I believe is that if you come up with a, a next, next generation EU yeah. 2.0, that it's important that they also include not only national projects, but also trans-European projects. Yes. We have a lot of challenges at the European level that we can only tackle at the European level. Well, then at that moment, it will also be necessary that we that we come up, not only let's, as we have now with our um, in our recovery um, funds and all the projects that are all at the national level, yes. but that we also come forward with transnational European projects and programs that can also give an, an, an yeah, and, and, and can do investments in the challenge that we face. So tailor specifically to, let's say, defense projects or, For or example, something defense that's, that's projects, tailor but, made. But, but also looking more at the, at the transnational uh, or at the European uh, European level. And just as a final question, we heard repeatedly in Davos this idea of the capital markets union and the banking union. Some believe we'll never see the day of light. It's too complicated. And I'm not sure if you agree, but some believe. Unfortunately, that's that's where we are. But the capital markets union that's easier and it's doable. When is that going to happen? Well, at, at least now there is a low hanging fruit that we that we still try to uh, finalize during mm -hmm. uh, during our presidency. I, I also believe that uh, coming to a real European capital market is really important. If you really want to yeah, invest in the challenges that we Business just indicated, for then, then we also need to look for private money. We mm -hmm. also need to look if if, if the, the private investors are going to take their uh, or going to invest their money. Um, so there, it's 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 so necessary that the the the, the capital markets union and that that we really move forward on that and that's also the topic that we will have during our informal ECOFIN mm -hmm. meeting in Ghent at the end of February where we will tackle this kind of questions how are we going to convince private investors to also invest in the challenges we have at the European level especially if you need the funding exactly well minister thank you so much uh, for joining us on Bloomberg always good to see you